Hey everyone, it is Scott from CertMedia.com, and today I will be discussing this final metric on PageSpeed Insights. As of the time of recording, max potential first input delay. I'll be trying to spell it more in English and go over general ways that you can improve this metric on your website. So, first, max potential first input delay is a, it's a mouthful. It's a complicated metric with a complicated means of measurement. But in the easiest way, think of it as, think of it as your website's first impression to the user. Having a low input delay allows users to experience your website better. It measures the time from when a user interacts with the website. So let's say they click on something, they tap a button, whatever, JavaScript, that's JavaScript controlled, and the browser is able to respond. So take my website, for instance, certmedia.com. There's this menu button right here. This is powered by JavaScript. The max potential first input delay would be the max time that it could take the browser to respond to the click on that menu and then actually showing the menu. For perspective, an eye blinking is about 300 to 400 milliseconds. Now, max potential first input delay is a very difficult measurement in terms of how it's measured. And latency is almost always going to be JavaScript that's impacting it because it's primarily a JavaScript powered metric. So when you write code that responds to events, you normally want it to run it as quickly as possible. That way users can get the fastest response time. One thing that ultimately impacts your first input delay is how much of your main thread is being consumed. So on my website, for instance, it in the minimized main thread workup says I got about one sec 1.1 seconds of time spent on the styling and the layout. And as I mentioned in the first video of this series, one of the things I could do is optimize my usage of Ionicons. I'm currently loading the entire Ionicons font set even though I'm only using less than five of the icons, that would greatly reduce the impact on here. But by having a slower main thread work and the main thread being idle, it allows the max execution, uh, max potential first input delay to be reduced because it's able to respond faster to you interacting with the page. If a user clicks on say the menu after the whole page is loaded, let's say that my website is downloaded in four seconds. And let's say the users looked away, they talked to their friend, their phone turned off, and they turn the screen back on and interact with it. Then the input delay would be much less because the main thread is not going to be busy at that point. It's already processed the page and there's nothing left to be downloaded or processed. They just forgot it was there. But if a user's coming to your website and they're trying to buy something, Let's say you have an Ajax powered form. They go to the form and they're typing in all their information and they really only need their name, their email, and what they want to talk about. They go, they hit the submit button, but the main thread is being worked up loading a bunch of JavaScript for assets that aren't even on that page. That will hinder the input delay because now they have to wait to get that little green check mark that says their message has been sent because the main thread is being busy trying to process the input. So the easiest way to help reduce the input delay obviously is to have smarter code, but it's also to load a lot less code and to load the code you have by splitting it. So in my last video, I talked about with the time to interactive code splitting, which is when you load assets only when they're necessary and you do it in smaller chunks. So my website, based on Genesis, my CSS file, I have one that's for the front. This is the front end CSS. Let me see. I may have actually removed it when I redid this page in Gutenberg, but previously I had a style sheet only loading for the home page. The home page style sheet was not, even, not really large, nothing that's particularly noticeable, a lot smaller than dash icons and it was loading only on the home page. And that, because it had specific styling 
for that page because it was totally unique from everything else. It couldn't be reused anywhere else. It was only loaded when it was necessary, which improved the render time of the other pages as opposed to loading it all together. Now, I wouldn't go, if you bought a theme off Theme Forest, don't go trying to go code split it because what's going to happen is it's going to ultimately break your website. If you're a WordPress user and you're trying to do this, you're kind of already behind if you've built a very large theme. But that doesn't mean it's all hopeless. One of the things that really drags down your site is the plugins that you throw on it. WooCommerce. WooCommerce loads all of its JavaScript, all of its CSS on every page, regardless of it being used. If you have a homepage that's just like mine, no WooCommerce, and you only load the assets on the WooCommerce pages, you reduce the impact on the user's input delay or the input time because they no longer have to worry about it loading because it's not. And then the main thread has more time to sit idle to process those inputs. And the things you can do are just common optimizations, reducing your time to first byte, serving minified assets, deferring JavaScript, loading CSS asynchronously, think of it as a culmination of everything you've done. And this metric is very hard to have a low input delay time. Your main thread is typically busy, busy and this is why it's been revised in future updates of Lighthouse. So currently the first input delay is not a metric that composes Lighthouse version 6. It said Lighthouse version 6 is going to measure in total blocking time. Total blocking time is the total amount of time that a page is blocked from responding user input. Mouse clicks, taps, keyboards, whatever. Now, any task that executes for more than 50 seconds is going to be it's going to be a long task, but typically the score for your total blocking time, which is how you should view your input delay time, will work as this. The total blocking time, anything from 0 to 300 milliseconds, it will be green. The 300 to 600 will be orange, and anything over 600 is going to be red, which is going to be in the bottom half of websites. This data is still very fresh, so the scoring guide couldn't change. The point is, is this metric is going to be changed. So many people who have websites, you're probably gonna see a slight score boost, and it's gonna ultimately be replaced in a newer version of PHP Insights. Long tasks are ultimately gonna be JavaScript driven. If you have a website and you have a theme, and you've already built it, and you just can't pay someone to redesign it on a very lightweight framework, what you can do is, also reducing complex elements. Don't use too many sliders. Don't use too many carousels. Don't try to load too many complex elements. And try to keep your DOM size low. Whenever you see too many DOM elements, uh, let me show you CNN. Yep, yep, here it is. Avoid an excessive DOM size. Showing less code is gonna go very far in reducing the max potential first input delay. It's just a culmination of doing everything you've already done and loading less and making do with less and making do with the code that you have to load by making it smarter. My website is 180 milliseconds max in potential input delay. That's on mobile. The CNN website is 10 times that score. It is 10 times slower, just about. I'm not going to do the full math on that, but... It's about 10 times slower to do the, to have a max input delay on the CNN website. There's too much JavaScript. There's too many moving elements. The CPU is basically completely consumed for almost a whole minute until the website is done. Particularly the JavaScript execution time. And the difference between a website that has a green on this score versus a red is very, very far. But the difference between it being having a green and a yellow is typically not that far. 
my website's not far from having a green score. And as I said, I could reduce the Ionicons to free up more of the main thread time. And that would probably get me to that point. But I'm already sitting comfortably at a 95, and I'm better than most websites on the internet. So just by, by loading less, having less complex elements, and only loading assets when necessary, and when you are loading them, loading them efficiently, use your async and defer attributes, minified them, you've done everything you needed to, that will reduce your first put input delay. If you have any questions about this metric, please feel free to comment below and I'll make sure to try and help you out. I'll try to explain it in plain English. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and goodbye.